Hello and welcome back to the NUFC Opinion Blog. This time it's for the NUFC in the EPL podcast, episode two for February 2021. I'm joined by Dylan Pick once again, as I was in January. And this time I'm joined by a new guest, a new regular contributor to the podcast, Ben Arkless, who you may have seen on the fan feature interview we did with him just a few weeks beforehand. Chaps, how are we both? I'm good, thanks not, yourself. I'm not bad, yeah, it's a pleasure to be back. Pleasure to have Ben on as well. Spot on. Okie dokie, so if we're just going to, as we did last time, go through the uh, matches that we played in February. We started on the 2nd of February with a 2-1 loss at home against Crystal Palace. Ben, I'll start with you. What do you think went wrong on that night? Well, it was a, it was a very good start, wasn't it? As I think I mentioned in my uh, interview at the time, uh, obviously it was good to see Shelby get on the score sheet once again. Um, I think in that game, we were far too, far too slack defensively. Um, especially for the first goal, we'll let um, uh, Van Arnhold get around the back far too easy. And I think for both goals, really, it was just we got to spot. We were just lost with concentration. And I think that urgency that was shown in sort of the first 10, 20 minutes, especially in the second half, ones we were behind, we just didn't didn't show that. Again, we looked too slow. And it's happened on a number of occasions this season, I think, where we've not really shown the intensity that we should. And it came back up again. And I think that was the main disappointing thing for me was just whenever whenever I looked like we we're going to kind of get back in the game after I went 2-1 down, I thought. Mm-hmm. Certainly, I mean, we had, you could say, half chances, but nothing really clear cut. And that was disappointing because we started so well. I think we just kicked on from the Everton game that we'd had a couple of days early, but then yeah. we didn't get the three points against Palace. And let's be honest, Palace are not exactly world beaters. And it's a, it's a game we should have looked to be winning. Dylan... With that, with that result in mind, do you think that that has affected some of the performances that have come in the rest of February? Um, I mean, it's, it's hard to judge. Won. That book oh, we, won, we so def- it- yeah, we definitely should have won. So, like Ben was saying, in the first kind of 20 minutes, it looked like a, a brand new side. Obviously, we'd just beaten Everton. It felt like we were really going to try and kick on and get those results more and more. And obviously, like I say, Shelby scored early doors. But there was seemed to be that kind of, because obviously they scored within five minutes. I think they I think they scored about the 20th and the 25th minute. So it seemed to be that little period of time where everyone just dropped off and everyone just stopped playing. Uh, mm. And obviously it's really, really backfired in that kind of little window that they had. And obviously in the second half, I mean, it was, it was there, there was nothing really spectacular going on in the second half. And I felt as though it was near the end, I think, when he, I think he threw Andy Cowell and Dwight Gale on. So there was about, there was about 100 attackers on and it just didn't yeah. seem as though... It was just a case of can someone try and score the goals, please? It doesn't matter where from, who from, just someone getting back that. And there was no plan, so it was a bit all over the shop in the second half. But it was definitely, it was definitely a promising first twenty minutes. Let's say it was the first good twenty minutes. Of course, a, a great goal by John Joe Shelby, but then just bad defending for the two goals that they scored. And then after mm-hmm. that, you know, thing is though, we had they they only took the lead midway through the first half, if I if I remember rightly. So yeah, we didn't get at least back into it properly. It shows that. The plan wasn't there at all because, as, as you said, Dylan, he hoid on about every attack we have. He still didn't manage to get back into it. However, the next game, you know, it was a bit better. I mean, it was certainly an interesting game, to say the least. It was the 3-2 win at home to Southampton, which was interesting in every sense of the word. Of course, a good win against the team who are in amongst this sort of bottom half battle, but with a few injuries and a few problems with red cards etc going down to nine men Ben if you could summarise that game in, 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 in a couple of sentences how would you do so uh, well I'll be honest the second half I, I was just in a I was in a right mess to be honest with you when Henry got sent off straight away and uh, more pro scoring shortly after I just it was it was just a nightmare that second half really was we did dig in though we did very well I thought when Dummer came on, I thought he put in a right shift and uh, I thought Hayden was another standout. Um, they both did really well. Obviously, in the first half, St. Maximin and Almiron, as we've seen again, sort of against, you know, I would say against Wolves, St. Maximin did well as well and obviously against Man United, he scored. Them two, you know, were linking up very well, I thought. And that was one of the sort of bonus points, the positives of the game. Mm-hmm. And although the second half was, I don't know, it was the war stuff we did do well we showed both sides of the performance good attack and performance in the first half backs to the wall in the second so I thought it was an a okay performance obviously the the sending off was a uh, wasn't something that we hoped for but you know I, I think the main thing was we got the three points that was that main, game. certainly it was yes I mean 
I think the main point I took from that game, Dylan, was Joe Willock had a fantastic debut. I know he's not exactly hit the heights of that since. He's, he's done okay since, but he, he did play very well on that occasion. How would you summarise how he played on that day? I think with Joe Willock is, in the January transfer window, I don't think Joe Willock would have been a player that everyone picked. Not un, not, not saying that he's not talented or anything like that, because he's definitely a gifted footballer and got plenty of potential. But in a relegation dogfight, which boy you are, ultimately in, you would have probably preferred a bit of an experienced player or someone that just knows how to find the net at this point. Uh, but no, Joe Witt was he was fantastic on the first game. He was definitely a bright spark in that midfield. He's, he's a massive contrast to someone like Jeff Hendrick or John Joe Shelby. You know, he, he likes to pick the ball up and run forwards. He loves to try and move forwards at any given possibility. And obviously he got his goal as well uh, in that game because he was in the right position, which is sometimes Newcastle's fault is that we just don't have enough players in that sort of attacking area. You normally got Callum Wilson, but that's it's normally about as far as it goes. So yeah, it was it was a great performance from him. And I mean, just that overall performance. To be fair, it was it was nail biting stuff. It was it was it was tough to watch at times. But you know, we 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 dug in. There was a lot of fight and determination, which I feel as though something that we probably lacked uh, in some of the games prior. I feel as though even if we're not performing well, sometimes Newcastle can just kind of grit in and and find a result, which they did there. So. It's a fair play. It was it was tough to watch, but it paid off in the end. It certainly was. I was certainly biting my nails for the last twenty minutes. It, playing with nine men was it was nervous. It, oh, it takes a lot of skill to go down nine men, and then it also takes a lot of skill to get a result with nine men. Exactly. Fair no, you, play. You, you, spot uh, on it. Boys. you did mention there, Callum Wilson, Dylan. Of course, in that game against Southampton, we lost our talisman to an injury. I think what we're about three weeks into that sort of yeah. four to six week period that he's meant to be out for now. He's been a massive loss since, and obviously without him, the goals have to an extent dried up a little bit. So not as if they were coming in fly flow anyway. I mean, well, had... it's, it's true, but he had contributed a massive <laughs> proportion of our goals. This yeah, season yeah, yeah. So without him, just just as a little off-topic question, do you think that without him, it may contribute to maybe us going down or staying up? I mean, I don't, I, I don't mind stepping in. Yeah, I, I think. Mm-hmm. It's it's something you don't want to think about. You don't want to consider relegation all day. It's, a horrible it's something no. I think we're, we're kind of trying to put it at the back of our minds a little bit at the minute. But I think the last couple of weeks, it's, it's just, you look at Chelsea, we never looked like scoring. No. Some of the chances we had against Wolves, I think if Wilson had been in the team, it could have been a completely different story. Like the Joe Linton chance, for example, I'm sure we'll come on to it later, but... Yeah. Um, you know, you fancied Wilson to just be that little bit more accurate, put it in the corner or something like that. And even the runs in behind have been missing a lot. Um, although, in fairness to Joe Linton, he's done okay when he's coming to the team. Some of his build-up play has been a bit better. But I think without Wilson, we'll have looked. It, it is a bit, a bit of a concern. Yeah, I think we'll have yeah. looked a bit. Definitely, there's, we're not as sharp as what we normally are. But then at the same time, maybe we shouldn't have that reliance on one player. You know, what no. we're so reliant on Wilson, that's the worrying thing, I feel. No, I agree. I think the, I think to kind of answer your question, if, to whether it will contribute to us getting relegated, I think it would obviously be a massive factor. If we lose him, for if he's probably scheduled to be, what, for the next three or four games still to be out, that would yeah. definitely be a contributing yeah. factor in some of the games that he is going to miss because he definitely would, well, you would fancy him to score in those games. And obviously, again, as we'll come on to a bit later, it doesn't look as though the injuries exactly get any easier after mm. yesterday. So... You know, if, like I mean, like Liverpool. You know, if your best players are out and you struggle, that's just that's a fact. But it's at this point in the season and the position that we are, we can't afford to be struggling like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it will definitely, definitely have a factor. I think I think the next game was the low point for the, of February, in my opinion. Chelsea away, the two 0 loss. It was probably the worst performance of the month. Uh, we just didn't look like scoring at all. There was just there was just no composure in the ball. We just went back to sort of what we've been doing all seasons, defending deep and pumping it long and hoping that someone will get on the end of it. The 2-0 loss, you know, Emil Kraft was bullied by Timo Werner with his pace and it was just an all-round depressing game to watch from a Newcastle perspective. So, I mean, there's not much to take from that. I don't know if any of you lads had, had thoughts from what was a, a poor performance all round. Well, the thing is, if you know, because I think two key things in that game were Timo Werner, who hadn't scored for what, about seven Premier League games, obviously just then walks it was against us and, you know, and just gets his confidence right up to so fair play to him. And same thing with Kepa Rosabalaga, started a first game in, in know. God knows how long and gets himself a clean sheet. Just 
No, we're just boosting confidence. But I think the only thing I will kind of take away from that is if you show the the fixture list right at the start of the season, you know, go to Stamford Bridge. It's it's a game that we don't really expect to win. So I can totally appreciate, you know, it's not really a massive deal in that sense, but it's the way that we go about it, as I'm sure we discussed last month. It's the way we go about these kind of things where not only do we not expect to win, we don't even show like we're going to try and win. We just kind of it's damage limitation from minute one. And it's it's not an enjoyable experience. I think though, for on that on that after that game, if I'm not mistaken, Steve Bruce described the second half as excellent. Correct. Uh, if I remember <laughs> rightly, yeah. and um, I think we've we've mentioned a few times over the season how Bruce has been a you know he's never been kind of the favourite. Some of the things he said are a bit questionable, and I think I, I know he wants to you know keep the morale going in the team and stuff, but. When when he came out and said that, I just thought, what what the hell is this? Like he's just it looked as if he wasn't watching the same game as we were. Mm-hmm. And that was a no, little no, bit no. concerning for me. It was nil-nil in the second half, so you know nil, positive. Yeah. That's a positive. <laughs> I don't think we played any better in the second half than the first I, I, half, I, I, to be honest with you. I think he probably saw that maybe we had a bit more of the ball, which probably we did. But as far as I was concerned, Chelsea were just in cruise control by that point. Yeah, Chelsea would have went down the second gear. Exactly. They, they didn't need to because mm-hmm. they, the, they knew the game was won because they knew that we yeah. weren't going to do anything. But it was just shocking all around. Against Man United, which we will come on to next, it was a 3-1 loss. For about an hour of that game, things actually looked all right. You know, obviously Man United took the lead, even though we'd probably been the better side in that first half. Once again, Emil Kraft, this time bullied by Marcus Rashford. You know, El, El Chiqui Nutmeg and then scoring past Carl Dardo as near post a save he probably should have made. But we got back into it through Alan St. Maxman, a great half volley. But then second half, it started okay. Then once they went ahead again, then it went downhill and then it just reverted to type. So a game that we probably maybe could have got something out of, Dylan. I don't know. Do you think that it was a, it was, well, I don't know. Give, I mean... me, give me your thoughts on this. So, just as I said about the, the Stamford Bridge case again, Old Trafford, if you tell us that we don't win in every game, then fair enough. But in light of the Chelsea game, I think we did put a bit more of a shift in against Man United. Obviously, they were a bit, you know, Man United are very hit and miss. Obviously, they've, they've just, I think they've just been beat off Sheffield United at mm-hmm. Old Trafford. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a game that we can definitely try and take it to them um, and at least try and show something, which we did. Uh, Alan St. Martin was a fantastic volley, to be fair. Uh, I think he created quite a bit uh, in the first. In mm-hmm. the first half, but again, as Newcastle United go on, you know, you don't finish the chance that you create, you slowly get deteriorated. And then obviously they, you know, they finish their attacks, which is you know, fair play. They've got some of the best players in the world, but it was definitely more promising. But, you know, it's it's hard to take positives from a 3-1 loss, to be honest. Spot on. Ben, your thoughts? Yeah, likewise, as Dylan says, it's quite hard to take positives. Although we didn't expect to go into it, you know, with it, with any, you know, coming out with anything. Um Maybe it's the performance we could have expected something better from. I mean, I thought St. Maxman's goal was fantastic. You know, mm-hmm. to place it the way he did with the side of his foot on the half volley was fantastic, I thought. Um, I think uh, looking back, we should have had a penalty. I think Maguire, I think, was from a corner oh, or a free I kick. It, it was ourselves enough. over. Yeah. And that looked yeah. a, bit, uh, a bit dodgy a bit to me afterwards. But. But, you know, these big teams, I, I, I don't know how much truth in there is, but they seem to always get the look, don't they, when it comes to their decisions? And doing well, but... I, I think that's, I think it's from a from a little guy perspective in Newcastle United. Obviously, we need we need anything to go for us, and it, it just seems like nothing does. You know, like, it, you, look, you look at that incident, that the Maguire off the ball incident with LaSalle, mm. and then you look at the penalty they got. Now, yes, it was probably a penalty, and Joe Willick probably shouldn't have gone in where he did. To, for the challenge, but it was very soft. I mean, it was very soft. It, when you look at it in comparison to, you know, that incident, you think, like, why is that being given? And then why is that not being given? It, it's for me, it's the inconsistency of officiating that really sort of annoys but me. They didn't seem as though there was any kind of call for the smaller cells, not even from our players. It didn't, it just kind of, because I didn't see it in the game, to be honest. I no, didn't I mean, see it until after. It kind of just got brushed over as if it never had happened. Um, but yeah, well, it's not even VAR, nothing. You know these things. Surely they're monitoring all the little incidents off the ball. That that if if that's not their job, then what is their job? That's the thing. Well, so. it is. It, I know we missed it, but it is quite blatant. I mean, we just taken was just taking a free kick, I think. Yeah, so it was definitely in the view of somebody. Um, but yeah, it's very weird that it wasn't at least looked at because I mean, like you say, he didn't even look at the ball. Just took him out with his elbow. So surely mm-hmm. that's a, a red card, even. So like, that completely changes the exactly. game. But it, it, it's off the ball as well. It's it, it's not even as if he's going for a challenge. It, it's it's malicious no. as, far as I'm concerned. But 
Of course, as I mentioned before as well, Man United's first goal, Carl Darla was beaten at his near post in a save he probably would have wanted to make. And of yeah, course, definitely. For the final game of the season, sorry, season, uh, this month. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, the way things are going. The final <laughs> game of this month, he was dropped, of course, for the first Premier League game this season for number one, Martin Dubravka. Do you think that was the right call? Of, co- of course, we'll, we'll get on to the details of what happened with Dubravka in the Wolves game in the moment, but just in general terms, do you think it was right that Dubravka finally came back in? I think, yes. I think, I don't I, I don't quite know the you know the details, but from what I gather, Darlow wasn't told in the right manner. From what I've heard, mm. it sounded as if he mm. kind of, it was just sort of on a th- Thursday night, like, late in the week when he was told, which yeah. that's true, isn't the best way to go about it, I don't think, but um, I think he's he was getting a little bit sloppy the past few weeks, I mean he saved us countless times this season I think, mm. but yeah, there's always I think at the end of the day Dubravka still were number one and there's always going to be a point where he comes back on the side I think if he didn't get enough game time, he would be he could be snapped up by anyone I think go anywhere and I think if he wasn't playing he probably would because he could get a game elsewhere so I think he did have to come back in the side and I feel like it was probably the right time mm, yeah, yeah I, I think you're right Ben Dubravka is number one as far as I'm concerned he is overall the better goalkeeper uh, as you say though Carl Dodd has done fantastically well this season has made many fantastic saves probably the best season of his career so far you, you'd imagine but yeah, I think it was time for Dubravka to come in. Of course, the match itself was Newcastle 1, Wolves 1, a game that we were looking to win and, of course, took the lead in but didn't hang on for the three points owing to some shocking defending and a, a, a goal that Wolves scored that Dubravka probably should have saved if we're brutally honest about it. Dylan, a, a game that we should have won, what, what do you make of it? Um, I think going into it, this is, especially given the run of fixtures that we kind of have over the coming season, this is a one that we really need to take it to Wolves. I mean, Wolves have been a decent side for a couple of seasons now, but this season they've really dropped off. I think they're only a couple of points ahead of us, to be fair. Fine, uh, but right? Especially after losing, obviously, their talisman and Raul Jimenez. Uh, so they've really looked off the ball. So it should have been a game that we took to them. And in fairness, again, I think we did take the game to them. I think we had a lot of decent chances. Miguel Almiron playing just out of his skin at the minute. Um, obviously, until he got injured. Uh, but he was, he was playing fantastic in that first half. But it comes mm-hmm. down to, as a common theme with these games, is that we seem to be creating a lot more chances, but we just don't have someone to put them in the back of the net. And obviously, in the end, it costs us because other teams, they get the chances and they put them in the back of the net. Yeah, spot on. Obviously, it comes down to, obviously, we're, we're missing our, our star striker in Callum Wilson. Ben, the missed chances that we had, do you think any of them could be taken differently? Uh, I think a lot of them could have been, to be honest with you. I think Isaac, Isaac Hayden wanted to start the match. Yeah. Although he got it on target, it could have been placed a lot better. I know he's a midfielder, but still, it's at the head. It, it, it should be, he should be put in the corner. If it goes in either corner, it's in. The keeper's not exactly. Seen. Exactly. I think um, the Willock chance, St. Maxman did absolutely fantastically for that. The way he went, what was it, round sort of three or four players? I mean, he did it a couple of times in the game, in fairness to him. Um, but Willock, I think, should have done better with that. Uh, obviously, it was unfortunate. St. Maxman was offside on the, on the follow up. The Joe Linton chance was the main one for me. As I said earlier, if Wilson had been in the side, that might have been placed a bit better. But mm-hmm. I think at the same time, it was so unlucky. Like the defender had his back turned to the play. Yeah. It was just, I think it was just complete luck that he got, got something to it. But in fairness to Joe Linton, he did beat the keeper. He did. Was- that's, that's the main thing. And <laughs> But... But at the same time, for a forty million pound player, which shouldn't be saying he can just no, be hicky back, which should be saying he can finish well, and that's exactly. something as we know on too many occasions. Is yeah, he hasn't finished well enough this season. I, th- I think with this game, because obviously we're we're dwelling very heavily on the chances that we missed and the goals that could have been, but I think we need to look at their goal for a second because obviously there was there's stuff that came out over the last kind of couple of days about this uh, about Matt Ritchie so it's, you know he apparently hasn't yeah, given the right I tactics across exactly so which which you know it, it, I guess it could happen I mean that's very far-fetched but why is Isaac Hayden who is arguably our best centre midfielder why does he keep getting put right back you can tell he's not a confident right back and I'm not saying it's entirely his fault that it was his goal but, but I'm sure it is his man yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah so but why, why is the manager put... Because obviously Isaac Hayden is just doing what he's told, as any player would. 
why is it keep putting why is it keep putting them right back? Why mm-hmm. why did we why have we sold a right back in January who was more capable than the, the right backs that we've got? And we're not even playing those right backs in right back. We're subbing some centre mid mm. at right back. It's it's bonkers to me. And I mean, either kid, fair play. He's also played centre back this season, which again we've got a very capable centre back out on loan uh, in Spain. So, so you know, you can put some of the blame on the players, but you kind of put it all on the all on the players. I think, uh, I think with regards to the substitutions, there's been twice this month I can remember that Steve Bruce has made poor decisions, like bringing on Richie when we need a right back, someone better than Hayden should cut going right back so he can play in midfield. And then Man United as well, when Joe Linton went off, he brought on a right winger and the shape just went... Hmm. went He's got a habit for that at the minute. He's got a habit for that. For some reason, the last 20 minutes, we just seem to just lose anything. And it's just a Mm. case of... It's Sunday league S where it's... You can go on and you just try and do something. It's it's not great. It's It's really not great. Like you say, we can put all this blame on all the players, but... They need to be played right as well. It means they need to be coached well and told exactly how they should be playing. You know, like that's the job of the manager, surely. And the fact that mm. he, you know, we've said for a long time. We, we can say one thing though, because since Graham Jones has came in, we have looked a lot better. Oh, I know it's been a bit inconsistent, so but yeah, the the attack and play just you know we seem a lot faster. But uh, is it too little, too late? Defensively, I mean, you know, there's still some frailties there, in my opinion. I think that you know, as it showed against Wolves, there that mm-hmm. that that goal we conceded, the defending wasn't brilliant. From not just from Isaac Hayden, who was in out of position, but from Jamal Lewis as well. He, I'm not completely <sighs> told on Jamal Lewis. As far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have Paul Dummett in the team now. He's fit at left back. I think so. I think Lewis, when he first came in, I think he looked quite promising. He can put a good ball in the box, I think, but. He's not showing it enough, and he's got two slots. Defensively, defensively wise, he's, he got turned yeah, far too easy. Yeah, and I, I think as well. You say that, Dylan. Like you know, we've sold Yedlin, and and, and we're, we're playing craft at the minute because at the minute the, our best right back is Mankiw, but of course he's injured. Yeah, and and, and we're and we're playing craft, but we've sold Yedlin. Who, let's be honest, like Adama Traore, who we came up against, and Timo Werner before that, and Mark Rashford before that, all pacey players. Yedlin would have been a match for their pace. His defensive abilities weren't always brilliant, but if it's if it's a if it's a pace race, then yeah. Then, yeah. then then DeAndre Yedlin keeps up with him, and I just think that overall, I'd rather have Yedlin back than Kraft. Of course, I can't. No, of, co- of course, I, I totally agree. I mean, I've never been sold on Yedlin or Kraft. Uh, I remember when Kraft came in; it was a bit of a random one, a bit of an outsider, and he came in. Didn't you know he's he's not even I, I don't want to slander the lad because I'm sure he's you know I'm, I'm sure he's probably got a bit of football ability in there of course he has but from what I've seen from him you know he's, he just doesn't seem a very stern defender he seems very he, he keeps off and by the time he's kept off you know the players have took it mm-hmm. around him obviously yeah. a couple of the goals in this month have been through someone just kind of calmly taking it around him and firing it at the back of the net mm-hmm. but like I say I, I was never sold really on John Ray I don't I think he he did really show talent in the championship but. We're not in the championship anymore. So, like you say there, if you were going to give me Edlin or Kraft, it would be Edlin just purely down to the pace because though they may not be very solid defensively, at least he can try and keep up. And as you say, Dom try away, probably one of the fastest players in the league. I think Edlin would definitely give him a run for his money. So, another decision from the club that's just a bit, yeah. a bit what's going on. Now, before Dylan, you mentioned Miguel Almoron, who has been probably been our best player of late. Mm-hmm. Again, played fantastically well in the first half against Wolves. But then we lost him to injury and we also lost Alan St. Maximan to a groin injury. Mm-hmm. We don't, at this point, at the time of recording, know how bad these injuries are and how long they're going to be out for. But worst case scenario, if we lose these two for a significant amount of time and the fact that we also haven't got Callum Wilson, where do we go from here? <laughs> because, and I'll, ben, I'll let you come on in a second. So I've had quite a, quite a bit of talk about this, but as you know, with this... Apparently, it looks it looks quite bad for Armoron. Um, in the change, I think he went down around half an hour mark in Wolves, but he kept playing for the rest of the first off, which, you know, whose decision that was, I'm not too sure. But obviously, Steve Bruce was majorly concerned about his reaction to it in the in the changing room. So it doesn't look good for Armoron. AS, ASM, as in St. Maxim, I mean, he goes down quite a bit, to be fair to Alan St. Maxim. You know, he, he's, glass, he's glass angles, you know, they're good on the ball, but they're not great against opposition studs. So... Yeah, I mean, if 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 they're going down and our front three looks as though it's Jacob Murphy, uh, Joe Linton, and Dwight Gale, I mean, would that win you the championship? I don't know. So, 
I think it's such, it's such a worry though. The three best players we've got, the three players we rely on the most, are the ones that are injured at the minute. Yeah. Um, I think when Fraser did put a good ball in the box for ourselves, so it was a good, it was a good ball. Yeah. That, I feel if if anything, I feel if Fraser's playing, I think I'd personally rather see Andy Carroll play. I know Andy Carroll's right. not everyone's cup of tea, but Fraser Just puts a good ball in the box. In the box. That Andy Carroll can attack better than Dolan, and so yeah. I'd probably like to see that that line up there. But the th- we've been relying on Andy. We were relying on Andy Carroll to get the goals ten years ago, and we're still now relying on this big thirty-three-year-old. You know, let's be honest. His football abilities are, are really limited. His movement is really limited, but he is an absolute handful. So I do definitely agree. I That's would like thing. to see if him get a ball at the front on his head in the box. Oh yeah, there's there's no question about that. And I think correct me if I'm wrong, in January, obviously when we offloaded DeAndre Edmund, I think Christian Atu's been re registered for the side. Yeah, yeah. So we'll so, actually see of him. You know, but we have we, we have the likes of Jacob Murphy and we have the likes of Ryan Fraser and both of them can put in a ball as far as yeah. I'm concerned. So if we're playing them and Andy Carroll's in the middle, there's still a chance. I I know <laughs> it's very it's very Tony Pulis esque of just it let's is, get it in the big it line is, and let's get it right, in the middle. But, at, at this time of the season, uh, as good oh, as no, the definitely. have been of late, we just need to pick up goals and results, to be honest. No, definitely. Yeah, but I mean, definitely. Andy Carroll's got one goal. <laughs> he has, <laughs> yes. But he, of, of course, he hasn't really had a much of a run in the team. No, I know. I know. I know. It is, it is a bit unfair. But Julian has Julian's got one this season, I think, as well, as he? Or two? Three, if you count all competitions, one in the Premier League. I'm not counting all competitions. I'm not counting them. Because two of them were against Morgan. <laughs> Uh, no, oh no, not counting that game. Um, but who? Dwight Gale, he's got a couple. But I mean, he's got one or two, I think. Yeah. You only need one. You only need one chance. And you know, I think to argument with Dwight Gale as well, we're seeing it in the championship. He can get in the right positions, and he can put the ball yeah, in the back of the net. He always has been. Yeah. Just can we create those chances for those two? Because they they are mm-hmm. two so different strikers that you have to get it in such a good position for them just to bury it. Yeah. I don't know if I don't know if we're capable of that. Looking ahead to next month, just before we come to a conclusion here, we've got West Brom away, Villa at home, and then Brighton away. What do we think? How many points do you think we'll pick up? I think we've got to look for at least six. Personally, I agree. West Brom, I think if we don't beat them, I'm worried. Um, <laughs> It'll, it's nearly a year, Ben, since me, you, and our good friend Matthew went down there for the FA Cup uh, match in the fifth round. Of course, we fantastic. That was a great game. Fantastic. It was. It was really night. good. Uh, three yeah. and up, of course, pegged back to three two. But if anything like a repeat of that would be fantastic. Of course, we, on that night we did have Amron and Saint Maximan. So you know, I mean, I think a repeat of that result would be fantastic. Whatever the scoreline, as so long as we win, I think that's the main thing. Yeah. But uh, back to your question earlier, I think Brighton is arguably a bigger game than West Brom because if we beat them, I think we'll go above them on points. Yeah, if things work out in time. Um, Let's be honest, and I think obviously, West Brom and Sheffield United are probably doomed no matter what they do. As yeah, as well. I think we'd rather, if anything, we'd rather just see another team below us just for that buffer, you know, between us and the relegation yeah, no, zone. It, it, you're right, you're spot on. Villa have had a good season, there's no doubt in that. And of course, when we played them away a couple of months ago, it wasn't a great performance at all. It was a, it was a, was it a two 0 loss if, if I remember rightly, and you know they've 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 got, they've got yeah. some good players. Jack Grealish at the moment is injured, but. If he comes back, then you know he could just torment us. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I reckon we, we have to look to win at least two of those games. I think, which is quite a scary thought considering we've won one in the last month. And in, I don't know what it is. The record is it's. I think it's, I think it is like two and twelve. I think it's something around something those, along those lines. And we've got to get two and three, which is very worrying. But to count to obviously on the other side of things, we've got this fixture list. We're not. I think Fulham. I've got a very They've tough got one. Some in. horrible games. They've so, got Liverpool, Man City, and Tottenham. I think. In the so next. yeah. So hopefully, if we're picking up at least some points in these games and they're dropping all their points, then you know you'd hope for the best. But you never know with Fulham because they look a lot sturdier than we do. Course, and obviously, they've man. acquired Josh Madger, who seems to be able to find the net more than our strikers can at the minute. You've got, you've got unfortunately to um, Burnley as well in this thing. I think because of course they were hammered by Tottenham yesterday, and you know they're only what a couple of points ahead of us and on a similar goal difference now as well. So one win and then we'll probably go ahead of them on goal difference, another win and we go ahead of them on points as well. So as far as I'm concerned, Burnley are still in this fight as well. You know, they No, absolutely. I, I totally agree. I, Brighton and Burnley are definitely in this, but the only reason I focus so much on Fulham is because they are currently this, the side 
that is stopping mm-hmm. anyone else from going in the relegation zone. So as long as they lose, for all, for all Burnley, Brighton and Newcastle's sake, if we lose every single game, as long as Fulham do, <laughs> as sad as it is to rely on such a fact, yeah. as long as they don't get any more points, then we're all, we're all OK. So, yeah, they're definitely in the fight. But what's the difference most finishing, you know, 17th to 15th? You know, it, it, it's fine margins. Yeah. I, th- I agree. Ben, any, any closing thoughts? Well, I think I just on the point of relegation, you know, every season, one team who looked safe gets dragged in. I think we arguably looked uh, before, you know, the December period when we had that absolutely shocking run. We looked, I wouldn't say we looked fantastic, but we looked well, all right. Picked up some results, you know, some good results, yeah. And I think it's just been our, our luck that we've been dragged into it. But as we've discussed, it's such a big run of fixtures coming up and you know, just to stick three, six, nine points, anything more, you know, ahead of Fulham, that'll do us nicely. Just mm. anything to keep us going. And hopefully it doesn't come down to the last day of the season. That'll be a, a very big game. Against Fulham themselves, Dylan. Imagine that. Imagine that game. And it could be in front of fans as well. Imagine that game. Oh, mm. it's, it's a way. Is, is it a way? If I'm it is a way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the worry, isn't it? But, if, if but it, I fans. mean, you, yeah, you can't you can't dwell on the fact that they might have the home advantage because if we haven't stayed safe by then, then you know we don't deserve any advantage. Yeah. To be honest, it's, 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 it's still in our hands completely at the moment. This moment in time, and as far as I'm concerned, if we can pick up the results, then we will be fine. But it's it's the matter of picking up the rules. Those results <laughs> no. that is the we, challenge itself. I, I know there was a start a couple of weeks, so I'm not too sure if it's still the case. But we, since Christmas, we're bottom. I think in terms yeah. of results, I don't know if you know the Wolves game impacted that at all. But you know, even if it's 19th, it's still it's still not great, especially considering we need to pick up these points drastically fast. Um, yeah, it's going to be a. It's, it's hopefully next month's better than the past two months because in the two roundups that we've done, obviously today and then last one, just us two. There's been two wins, you know, one in each one. So hopefully next month we're gonna at least get two wins. I know, bit of a brighter thing to talk about. Yeah, no, spot on. I agree. And with that, you know, that that brings to the very two uh, close. And we we hopefully, as we say, we look into March and hopefully we can pick up some 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 better results. We certainly need to with the way the table is looking. Lads, thank you very much both for joining me. We're we'll back next month for the next NUFC in the EPL podcast. There'll be a lot more content coming soon on NUFC Opinion Blog on the YouTube. So do look out for that. We have a a good schedule lined up for content every week. So please do subscribe and have a look. So that all just leaves me to say thank you all very much for watching. And how are the lads?